Joining us now, Mike Huckabee, former governor of the great state of Arkansas, also uh, the host of Huckabee on Trinity Broadcasting Network. His daughter was shunned uh, from this Virginia restaurant, another in a series of stories where uh, Trump-connected officials or supporters uh, treated in this vile fashion. Uh, he joins us now. Gov, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Good to be with you, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Maxine Waters, uh, in my mind, should be censured by the U.S. Congress. A year after we had um, Steve Scalise shot at that congressional baseball game by Bernie Sanders' volunteer, we're hearing her type of rhetoric, uh, and it seems like it's ramping up across the country, not calming down, but ramping up. It's totally out of hand. What Maxine Waters said was irresponsible for the member of Congress to be saying such things and citing rioting and violence and uh, attacks against uh, public officials. I I think it violates uh, federal law to do that, Uh, but that'd be for maybe a a cop to determine. But then you add to that what Peter Fonda said last week about Melania, about uh, Kirsten Nielsen, and about my daughter, who's he had the audacity to suggest that people would go to their homes, kidnap their children. Now, when you start suggesting that stuff, Peter Fonda ought to be in jail right now. The fact that he isn't is, to me, a testament that we have two sets of rules in this country, one for people on the left who are given an excuse because, after all, they supposedly, I guess, have a right to say irrational, hateful, intolerant, bigoted things. And then you have another set of rules for uh, people who are conservative who can't even go to a restaurant and have a dinner with their families without being asked to leave. By the way, Laura, there's a part of that story that has not been told. You're going to be the first to hear it. Once Sarah and her family uh, left, and, of course, Sarah was asked to please vacate, Sarah and her husband just went home. They, they had sort of had enough. But the rest of her family um, went across the street to a different restaurant. The owner of the Red Hen, because nobody's told this, then followed them across the street, called people, and organized a protest, yelling and screaming at them from outside the other restaurant and creating this scene. One of the members of uh, Sarah's in-laws who were there, um, by the way, most of her in-laws, not her mother-in-law and father-in-law, but most of them are very liberal. And one of them walked out and said, look, I don't like Trump. I'm not a supporter. I'm a far uh, considered liberal, but you guys are embarrassing me and you're not helping the cause. It was ironic that, you know, and and he said, Sarah's not even here. You're yelling and screaming at somebody who's not here. Uh, This is what the left has been reduced to. It's it's really tragic, and it is dangerous, and that's what I think people need to recognize. Um, This woman, Laura Wilkerson, Wilkinson, who's the owner of this restaurant, Stephanie, excuse me, Stephanie Wilkinson. Um, she said she huddled with staff, many who took issue with the White House on a number of issues, and some of whom are gay, and asked them if they thought Sanders should go. They did. They voted, I guess. Uh, she said, I was babbling a little, but I got my point across in a polite and direct fashion. I explained that the restaurant has certain standards that I feel it has to uphold, such as honesty, compassion, and cooperation. And I said, I'd like to ask you to leave. Well, that was really a great display of compassion and understanding by telling uh, a person who had just driven three and a half hours from Washington to join her family um, that she needed to leave because of her political differences. She worked for someone that this individual did not like. I, I think there was a missed opportunity on the part of this restaurant owner. What she should have done, this could have been, as the Democrats like to say, a teachable moment. And here's what she could have done. She could have said, Ms. Sanders, I'd like to visit with you. You talk to the president several times a day. Please convey to him how disappointed I am in some of his policies. Please convey to him how many of us out here uh, really are offended by things that he says or tweets. And I would appreciate your passing that on. Now, we plan to serve you a delightful dinner. We hope you enjoy it. But now that I have you here in my restaurant, I just wanted to say those things quietly and privately, and I hope you'll take them to heart. That could have been a very powerful opportunity for her to speak to somebody who speaks to the president four or five times a day in the Oval Office. Instead, she now has demonstrated that she is intolerant, that she wants no part of the business of people who do not agree with her politically. Laura, I'm going to be very clear. I want people 
who are on the left to do as much business with me and the various businesses that I have as humanly possible because I'm going to take all the money that they will uh, give me in their patronage. I'm going to spend it on my church, on conservative political candidates who are pro-life. I'm going to give it to the Right to Life organizations that I support. And I'm going to be grateful that people on the left help support things that, that I really love. I've never turned their money away. I think that's crazy, unless they ask me to do something that did violate my conscience, like make a you know a Nazi T-shirt for them or, mm-hmm. or, or do something that is... Utterly right, but governor, but governor, you're you're acting, and I think you you're saying this because this is the way you you feel, and it's the way you know. Obviously, I want everyone to do business with my my businesses as well, but sure. they they don't want debate. You don't you don't understand this. These people yeah. are not interested in debate. That's the old idea of liberalism. They want no debate. They want intimidation and demonization, and that's that's been from the very beginning. When Trump shocked the world and won that election. They went into overdrive, fanaticism, went ever more radical in their views. Now he's a Nazi. Now he's a brown shirt. Uh, Holding people who violate our laws in custody is now equivalent of internment camps. Uh, And now they're driving people out of public places, which is a violation of of Sarah's and her family's civil rights, by the way. She has a civil rights action, um, uh, an an action against uh, this particular restaurant. Um, so the idea that they, they, they want debate, no, they're not interested in debate. They've lost the debate. American people are, are closer to Trump on these issues than they are to this red hen, Stephanie Wilkinson. And it's, it's, she's just an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. And Maxine Waters should be censured. She should ultimately be removed from office for what she said, because someone's, someone's going to get hurt. And I think blood is on the hands. If someone gets hurt, right on the hands of people who encourage this violence. Couldn't agree more. And, and w- when you mentioned people like uh, Donnie uh, Deutsch, I always have to be careful how I pronounce Yeah, I know. Me too. Um, but the fact is, when, when he says anyone who supports Trump is a Nazi, I want to know, where are the Jewish organizations who ought to be right. outraged? Because he has shown an extraordinary level of disrespect, insensitivity, and minimalizing what happened to people who went through the Holocaust. Or I've been to Auschwitz three times. Let me tell you something. For him to say that people who support Donald Trump are the same as Nazis, that is not only wrong, but it is disgustingly wrong. And for Joe Scarborough to say that anybody who votes for or supports the president is a racist, well, that in itself is a, it's a statement that is intended just to end the discussion so you don't have to have a rational, thoughtful conversation with someone. Well, you know, you, had, you have people even like this Tom uh Udall, Senator Udall in in Utah, who when he was pressed this morning on, I believe it was on CNN, we might have the soundbite, he was pressed on whether he he's he would be okay with families to be detained together because they were all worried about families being separated. And this what is what happened. What have you seen? What conditions are these well, children living in? What, you know, what, what I'm worried about the most is the emotional scars to young children that are separated from their parents. Uh, that's very traumatic. All the mental health people tell us that uh, this can leave permanent scars. And so I saw many young children as young as three years old uh, without their parents. That's not the bite we wanted. Sorry, Governor. What, what he was asked about is... Do you have it now, James? Or we don't? We didn't cut it. Sorry. You know, you know how radio goes, Governor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We don't have it apparently. But he was asked about whether he would be okay with people being with people being released into the country. I think we finally have it. Let's listen. Would you okay. be supportive of a system that held parents alongside their children, maybe indefinitely? I, I don't think we should move from one humanitarian crisis to then a humanitarian don't. crisis of creating camps in this country mm-hmm. with families. A parent with a child can be released to a sponsor who's been vetted with an ankle bracelet, and they, they show 99% return at the courts and at their hearing. Well, first of all, most of them pull the ankle bracelets off, so that's a false, uh, you know, false way of phrasing it. Um, but I think we now know Democrats aren't interested in detaining anyone. If you cross the border, you get a foot across the border, Governor, you should be released. I think that's going to be an election issue they're going to have to uh, live with this fall, and I hope the Republicans are smart enough to say that this is really fairly simple. If you believe in open borders and nobody should be checked or vetted, 
and that would include terrorists or anybody being able to get through, and all they got to do is bring a baby in their arms and they're in, um, then you need to vote for the Democrats because that's what they're going to give you. If you believe that borders mean something, in the same way that you believe that you lock your doors at night at home and that you protect your families, then you should vote Republican because th- this could not be clear. I want to say something. As a governor, Laura, every single day, uh, I oversaw the separation of families. I didn't enjoy it. I hated it. But when you've got parents who were a mother who's a crackhead, or you've got parents who were making meth in a bathtub and exposing kids to poisonous uh, toxins, you bet we took kids away from those parents, and we didn't like it, and they cried, and it was horrible. But you did it because if you didn't, then the public would be screaming at you for letting those children be in harm's way. Of the 12,000 uh, children that the Democrats were primarily upset about, 10,000 of them were separated, but they were separated back at their homes, not at the border, because these children came unaccompanied. And that's a piece of the information that the left-wing media, and I guess I repeat myself when I say the left-wing in the media, but they've not told the American public. Um, I'm sympathetic. I don't want to see children separated, but I don't want to see us just give up on our borders, and I think there's a sane, rational way to do it, but it's not the way that some of these Democrats want, which is have no borders, have no border patrol, uh, simply ignore the laws, because I, I tell you this, there's not a country on earth where that's the way it works. Now, we've it, tripled it, the number of asylum applications. The credible fear, people claiming credible fear of persecution has increased like 1,700 percent over the last 11 years. And people know that, you know, you claim that and you're from Central America because that 2008 law Congress passed, you can't be deported at the border, can't be immediately turned back. So they, if they have a child, they know they can... You know, they know they can do it. So that's that's where that's where we are right now. And how is Sarah doing? Do you know how is she doing after that incident? Well, Sarah's a tough girl, as you know, and, and uh, things generally just don't bother her. I think it was uh, very frustrating to her and humiliating that, you know, she drives three and a half hours just to go have dinner. It wasn't she wasn't there to rally. She wasn't wearing any political insignia. Uh, she wanted to have a quiet, nice dinner with her family. Uh, on her in-law's side, many of them are liberals and don't even care for the person she works for, but they were going to have a civil conversation and dinner. And it was just, I think, shocking to her that in America uh, this kind of thing would happen and that people would celebrate the restaurant owner as if somehow that's heroic. And, And I'll tell you, the false equalization of saying that it's just like the cake case, it is so not like it because Jack Phillips, the cake baker, served any and everybody but he just said he's not going to do something specific. Okay. If, if she asked you know, the, the restaurant to serve her a MAGA cake, then they would be right to say, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, Governor Huckabee, it's always great to hear from you, talk to you. Hope you join us on, uh, on TV this week. Um, you take care. Give our very best to Sarah as well.